Hello and welcome to this short video about the role of the Zoning Board. My name is Lynn Markham and I work for the Center for Land Use Education. I offer Zoning Board workshops around Wisconsin. If you are a Zoning Board member, I thank you for doing this important job to help your community achieve its long-term goals. If you are not a Zoning Board member, but here to learn more about their role, thank you for joining us. Now, let's jump into this topic. Zoning boards have different names depending on what type of local government they're a part of. All counties plus towns without village powers have boards of adjustment. All cities and villages plus towns with village powers have boards of appeal. While their names are different, their roles are exactly the same. Both boards of adjustment and boards of appeal are referred to as zoning boards or the BOA. Zoning boards are different from zoning committees. What is the role of a zoning board? The zoning board functions like a court, so zoning board members act like judges. They must follow three sets of laws, state statutes, case law, which is court decisions from the higher courts, and local zoning ordinances. The primary role of a zoning board is to review and decide applications related to specific properties. They make quasi-judicial decisions, which means they make decisions like a judge. The zoning board cannot change or ignore any part of the law, but must apply the laws as written today. If you want to change the zoning laws, you should run for office as elected officials have the authority to change zoning laws. Zoning boards may recommend changes to a zoning ordinance. Because the zoning board functions like a court, their decisions can be appealed to higher courts. First a circuit court, then the Court of Appeals, and then the Wisconsin Supreme Court. If the zoning board followed state statutes, case laws, and their zoning ordinance, their decisions are typically upheld by the courts. A solid legal record includes the evidence from the hearing and the reasoning of the zoning board. Providing a solid legal record minimizes legal costs and zoning board reconsideration. Here we have the three types of decisions that zoning boards typically make. The first is variances. A variance allows a landowner to do something that is prohibited by the zoning ordinance. Conditional uses are land uses allowed under a conditional use permit, special exception, or other zoning permission issued by a local government, but not including variances. Administrative appeals are contested decisions of administrative officials, such as the zoning administrator. Why do zoning board decisions matter? Let's try this analogy. If the purposes of a zoning ordinance are held in a bucket and variances are granted that don't meet the legal standards, they are like holes in the bucket and the purposes of the ordinance, the water, leak out and are lost. Now a few examples. The purposes of a general zoning ordinance typically include protecting a community's health, safety, and welfare. Roadway setbacks protect the safety of drivers, passengers, and pedestrians by allowing people to see and react safely if someone is coming. These setbacks also allow for road widening and utility replacement. If variances are granted to roadway setbacks, allowing buildings closer to the road, they may result in more accidents and injuries and can increase costs for road widening and utility replacement. The photo shown here is from the rural area where I grew up. Both roads had speed limits of 55 miles per hour. When you came down Carver School Road from the bottom left of the photo to the stop sign, the only way to see left on Highway 20 was to pull onto the highway a bit to see around the home shown by the red rectangle and that was built very close to the road. A driver died there doing what I had done many times. A few years later, the house was bought and removed to make the intersection safer. Zoning board decisions impact whether public safety is achieved in a community. 
In Wisconsin, the navigable lakes and streams belong to all of the people of Wisconsin. We all have the right to swim, boat, fish, and hunt on these waters. Shoreland zoning was adopted to protect our lakes and streams. It does this by keeping shoreline trees and other deep-rooted plants in place to prevent water pollution and protect fish and spawning grounds. Granting variances to shoreland zoning standards, like for this house very close to the shore, allows shoreline tree removal, which results in more soil going into the water that can suffocate the eggs of walleye and other fish and degrade water quality. Zoning decisions are divided into three categories. The rules and flexibility associated with making these types of decisions vary greatly. Legislative decisions, like adopting a zoning ordinance, are made by the elected officials, such as the county board, with recommendations from the plan commission or zoning committee. Public participation is encouraged anywhere and anytime. Legislative decisions only need to meet two criteria. They must be constitutional and reasonable. For quasi-judicial decisions, like those made by the zoning board, predetermined legal standards apply and additional conditions may be applied as well. Also, discussion is limited to only during the hearing. Unlike other government officials, zoning board members, like judges, are not allowed to discuss their upcoming or past decisions anywhere outside of the hearing. If people contact you about zoning board matters, you should direct them to the zoning staff who can collect their information and answer their questions. For administrative decisions, such as those made by zoning staff, there is less flexibility. Ordinance standards must be applied as written. Now an example. Joe wants to build his home 20 feet from the lake. This is not allowed by the Shoreland Zoning Ordinance that has a 75 foot setback, so Joe applies for a variance. No neighbors object to Joe's variance request. His county board member is in favor of his variance. Many people would like to build homes close to the lake. How should the zoning board react to this information? Is this sufficient information to grant the variance? Is the decision to grant a variance a popularity contest where zoning board members count how many people are in favor and how many people are against? Here's a hint. What would a judge do? Judges and zoning boards don't make decisions based on how many people are for or against a request, and they can't change the laws. The zoning board can only grant a variance if the property owner provides evidence that they meet all of the legal standards for a variance. Thank you for joining us to learn more about the role of zoning boards. I hope you found this video helpful. Please contact me if you have questions. To learn about how zoning board members decide whether to grant variances, take a look at our next video, which is called Variances.